All right, pick it up where we left off last time. I've got this resin poured creek here. Um, and creeks aren't sheets of glass. So I need to add ripples to that because that doesn't look like a creek. That looks like a standing water situation. But I want there to be some ripples there. So I have a little piece of excess and I'll probably start back here after I work on a test that is the excess of when I mixed all this up. I mixed up more than I needed, so I just left a little plug of it in the bottom of the container. Let that cure, and I'm using that to uh, test my techniques here. So let me show you that. So big disclaimer here, I've never done this before. Um, I mentioned that a lot in my videos. I'm kind of learning as I go. Uh, watching other guys uh, on YouTube and, and, you know, reading in the hobby press, etc. And uh, also just, uh, you know, sharing what I'm working on. So uh, one thing I've seen done, this is Mod Podge, but this is the Gloss Mod Podge. And using brushes like this, I just dipped my brush in the glue and then kind of touched it to the surface. That's kind of hard to see from this angle, but it does kind of create a little bit of a ripply effect on the surface that's not, you know, not a sheet of glass anymore, which is kind of the look I'm going for. So I think what I'm going to do is try that same technique, uh, just mostly with this fan brush and where I want to add a little bit bigger ripples. I come in with this guy. Um, and if you think about a wave, especially where it's kind of cresting a little bit, which I think is what happens where water runs over rocks, if you look at pictures. Or, or, or you know, go out in nature and, and take a look yourself. Um, the the front of the wave, the where the you know, if it was if it was not moving water, <laughs> I guess the waves it's still in a creek. But think about the beach, right? So the waves moving towards the beach. It's more steep and higher on the front of the wave, and then kind of slopes off gently to the back. So I think what I'll try to do is replicate that with these brushes you know, where it's kind of, there's a rock underneath it or whatever, and it would make a little bit of a, a wave there um, in the creek. Uh, and then I think if, you know, if that doesn't give me the look I want, I've seen similar technique, same material, uh, brush it on and then hit it with an airbrush. Um, and I think if I hit it sort of on the upstream side, blowing it downstream, it'll build it up and give me that slopey, you know, the front of the wave being a little higher than the back. Anyway, that's what I'm going to try. Um, I'm going to mess around with it on the back section a little bit. This is, the, again, the result of me messing around just with this. And, for you know, sure enough, the clear Mod, mod Podge blends right in uh, to the resin. Uh, the perfect gloss, you know, there's you can't, you can't see that I've done anything to it other than it looks like one material. So... I'm gonna try that, see how it looks. This is the layout lighting. I had it over on the workbench, but I wanted to move it to layout lighting just to make doubly sure I liked the look of it before I did it on the layout. So more to come. All right, just to show, this has got that white gloss Mod Podge on it. Some of it hasn't dried all the way yet, which is why you can still see it as white. Um, but it kind of shows the pattern I was trying to do. I was taking the brush and kind of, you can kind of see the brush strokes there where I, trying to create that ripple effect as it's coming down through here. And then as it hits like a, there's a good spot right here, like a rock, um, that's going to form a little bit of a wake with the V of the wake sort of pointing upstream, right? It, it, it's as if the rock is, is, is moving in the water from, from left to right. So you can kind of see the little, little bow wave coming off there. So I tried to kind of do that just to kind of give it an indication just by looking at it. You could say, okay, the water's flowing you know, from the track down towards me and off the edge of the layout. I'm not sure how well this is all going to show up once it cures, but um, I'll try to pan a little slower. Uh, but I definitely wanted to kind of break up that glass, you know, sheet of glass surface I had and, you know, give, give the impression of some ripples and stuff. So we'll see what it looks like as it clears. I may need to add more, um, you know, add more texture to it. So learning as we go here. All right, and while that uh, while those ripples are are curing, and I can see what it looks like once they're fully fully clear, uh, starting right here with that lighter green, and then coming this way, I've started working in. You may recall this was just um, brown leaves with a little stuff along the track, but I started working the you know the scrap um, super trees uh, back from right to left, starting with that tall light green one, 
Um, this is, again serves to sort of hide where the river disappears. Oh, I say river, it's a creek. Um, put a little bit more stuff back there, kind of hide the bottom of the backdrop, uh, work my way up into those woods. So you can see the line, like right about there is where the backdrop starts and scenery ends. Scenery's going this way, kind of ends right there. So trying to blend that in, create some depth, even though there really isn't any. Um, if I stick my hand in here, you can see just how close to the backdrop we are. Um, you know, maybe five or six inches. But from down here, it you know, starts to have a little depth as if there's a whole lot of something going on, you know, <laughs> behind the track and there's, there's really not. And then more uh, here again, uh, starting right here. These trees are all you know, scraps of super tree and bushes and scruffy whatever. Again, just trying to blend the edge of real scenery up into the backdrop, hide the seam and all of that across the back. I uh, sort of stopped that is scenery, that is backdrop. So that's kind of the edge of it there. Um, because on the backdrop, there was indications that there was, you know, still some, some grass here. So I worked actual grass out to the, to this, to seam there. And I feel like that blends in fairly well as I pan back. I, I like the way that that, that looks, it's kind of, you know, you, you can sort of see some shadows and stuff, but in, but in general, that, that blends in pretty well. And I'm happy with that. So I'll continue to work these ripples and then I think it's time to get some dirt um, in along the sides of the track and then uh, keep working my way up and find the last thing I'll do through here is, is ballast. So um, the, the dirt will kind of come in along the edge. You can see there's actually some scenic dirt right through here and then it stops. So I want to kind of blend in the edge here, maybe not so much across the causeway but picking up again over here to kind of blend it in. And then last, I will do the, the actual ballast over the top. This track's already been painted. I do need to get some switch stands painted up and, and installed here, um, just like the one down there. So that guy, basically same as those. These are just the ones that come with the microengineering turnouts and they are, um, uh, they don't operate they don't do anything it's just it's just for looks um all these turnouts are manual throws uh, and the microengineering ones have a little snap in there so i literally just stick my finger in here and that's how i that's how i do it so th there's nothing going to be connected to that draw bar uh, on these microengineering turnouts so more to come as we uh continue working this scene all right i got the ties and switch stands all painted up and getting the extra ties, extra long ties for the switch stands installed here. And I had to do a little remedial scenery work. I had brought things a little too close to the track. And those, uh, those I guess, what am, I, what am I calling these? I'm not even sure what the terminology is, but these ties that shoot off away from the turnout where the switch stand uh, is supposed to sit eventually are longer than I thought. So you can see where I had to cut out a little, little bit of the scenery that I had put in here. Pulled it out, no big deal. Same thing over here. If I take this lock off, you can see I had to cut some mat out and kind of get things back in there. It's okay. I can go back and, and sort of re redo that. The area back there wasn't really done anyway. And then even over here, actually I actually had to dig out a little bit of sculpt mold I had on the side of this hill and uh, also remove some, some scenery mat there as well. So, making progress. So I've got all the um, all the long ties in, and then way over here, if I pan nice and slow, got the switch stands built and painted up, and I'll just super glue those on uh, before I ballast. So more to come. All right. Well, in the interest of bringing the ballast along here through these turnouts, I went ahead and painted the next couple of feet of track here. I'll probably only take the ballast, if you see this edge right here, I believe that actually forms, it does, the edge of that section there. So what I'd like to do is be able to complete the scenery all the way to this edge and then start getting into what I want to do with the yard and the, there's going to be a power plant back in that corner. So I'm not probably going to ballast all of this, I just wanted to get the paint going far enough away that... 
I can ballast, you know, to here. It won't have to worry about overspray later. Um, so I'll probably, from here over, won't be done. But that allows me to at least finish what I'm doing over here. Obviously, with the photo backdrop installed, I need to be very careful. So lots of uh, paper towels and uh, scenery masked off, etc., to make sure I don't have overspray going where I don't want it. Um, and then as I go in the future into the yard over here, I'll, uh, I'll be painting the track and doing all that weathering and stuff before that goes up, that being the backdrop. So just a quick update uh, as I roll along. Some ballasting done last night. Got these three turnouts and the area over the bridge. Uh, before, you may recall, the ballast came to about right here, somewhere in there. Um, so that, uh, yeah, doing the turnouts and stuff takes a little while. You gotta be uh, careful uh, with it. But I like the way it turned out. I think this is, this is looking pretty good. I still need to come in and do some remedial scenery, especially along the back there as you come across a couple little bare areas i need to come in and add some weeds and keep working this area just a little bit more but for the most part oh and also those little ripples i put in i don't know how well they're showing up on the camera there kind of see them there uh kind of clean up the sheet of glass look that it had it's more visible than in real life you can kind of see them there they kind of run from uh across uh the, the, the stream which is sort of what they look like um, in person. Uh, I happened to be at a creek uh, recently and was kind of staring at it, um, trying to see what it, what it looked like. So anyway, um, I'm happy with how this scene has come together. There's always remedial stuff to do. Um, I need to come in and add some more dirt and weeds along in here. And I'll probably put some of those standing weeds coming out of the gravel, sorry, the ballast. I need to weather the switch stands. Obviously some more stuff needs to happen along the track here and in between. Um, I'm gonna hold off on these trees here and that's, you know, this, this area here until I, you know, figure out what's going on here as I start working my way into what's gonna be a power plant over in that corner. So those will come later. So remedial work to come, probably the next video will be just that kind of stuff. Maybe we'll run some trains too. Um, and I need to come back and, and make some trees for over here. This front bare area needs a few more trees. So that'll be the next video coming up. And for now, I think this scene is 90% there. I like the way it came together. So I'll leave you here. I hope everyone is well and safe. Thanks for watching, everybody.